Welcome in. This is the RSM Classic live chat brought to you by Jock Market. Come on in. Come on in. Get the questions in the chat. We'll go through as many as possible. Also, ownership. Also, courses this week. Two courses being used. We'll go through the draw, maybe how you want to play this out. We'll talk ownership, whatever else comes up. Drop your questions in the chat. I'll go through as many as possible. Additionally, while you're here, take one millisecond, hit the like button. It's much appreciated. Helps me. Costs you nothing. Pretty good deal. Um, we're going to roll through these chat, uh, these questions here in a second, but I'm trying to think of what we need to talk about off the top. Uh, two courses this week, seaside course, plantation course. We can talk about the benefits, but historically the plantation course plays about a half a shot easier. So if you're looking at first round leaders, some books have split them out by course. Some books have not. If you want to take advantage of the books uh, that have not split out your first round leaders, uh, you should play the plantation course. That's where the lowest scores are likely to come from. Also, if you're playing on, uh, you're playing showdown slates, probably want to stack maybe your plantation course. Uh, round two showdown, I think is going to be the most exploitable because you can get a, a round's worth of information for the guys who played at Seaside where the only shot link data is. And then you can take that data and take it to the easier course. I think round two will be critical this week. We're going to talk about uh, that quite a bit. So let's just jump right into the questions off of the top here. Tyler Stevens, coming out of the gate, having trouble picking my last, the last guy for my core cascading in DraftKings, Doug, Doug Gim or John Huh. Maybe you can give pros and cons for both. We can certainly compare the two. So let's go over to the Holy Grail here, rickrungood.com. You can obviously go get your membership. You can mess around with this yourself. Let's do since the restart, Tyler. That might be a good time frame. And then let's just do Doug Gim versus Johnny Huh. And we'll just compare them against one another. And give this a second here because it's a lot. So 6,700 for Gim, 6,600 for Johnny, huh? Doug Gim has played more measured rounds. He's been better in general, uh, although they've been similar, right? Very similar off the tee. Johnny, huh, is a little bit better on approach, but a little bit worse putting. Around the green, Doug Gim is better. So they're, they're very even. Um, I would say uh, there's a bit more risk involved with, huh, because he's only played eight rounds. And because he is, um, well, now I'm on... Now I'm on William Hill. Where is it here? Uh, and because he is coming off that major medical, right? So you got you to gotta keep that in mind. Uh, this might be noise. They don't. Neither of them have a big sample size, but I think you can roll with uh, probably Dougie Gim here would be the way that I would go. Any concerns, asks Graham, about Harris English and his poor event history. He lives in the area, hasn't had a top 10. Yeah, so he's one of these... Um, He's one of these home game guys. So let's go to the cheat sheet. Let's go to the more history and let's look for Harris English. So this is 10 years. Uh, he has missed the cut in four of his last six starts. Doesn't have a finish inside the top 25 since 2012. This is kind of shocking. Although I would argue this about Harris English and maybe we can pull him up on the strokes gain database here. Um, real quick for you, Graham. It's not good. Don't get me wrong. It's not good for Harris English, but maybe we could make the case that he is maybe better now than he's ever been. Uh, you can see this, this uptick. So what you're looking at right now is his running strokes gained by category. Uh, and you can see right around, what is this? September of 2019, basically a little over a year ago, you start to see an uptick uh, where he starts to get better off the tee each week. Same thing happens at the same time in strokes gain approach. Gets better. Gets better. He's always been good around the greens. He's always been a great putter. I'd argue that he might be better now than in any other version of this event. So maybe it's home game obligations. Maybe it's family and friends and all that stuff. Uh, but I would argue at least he's probably better now than he has been. Any chance we could do more talking about ma uh, majors futures on this channel. I find absolutely crazy open championship numbers. Yeah. So this is a really good question. And this is something that 
uh, I think I mentioned at some point this week, you know, getting numbers on major championships is a year long effort, right? You, you know, I had like a JT 20 to one masters ticket last week. I had like a Justin Rose. I think it was 75 or 80 to one that obviously neither of them come through, but you should be like working hard all year long and following these numbers. So we can look up, uh, I had William Hill up f here for a couple of future futures bets. Um, let me pull this up real quick. So this is William Hill. If you have not signed up for William Hill yet and you live in New Jersey, Indiana, or Illinois, there are free bet offers at rickrungood.com slash Will Hill uh, that I know a lot of people have taken advantage of. It helps me. It helps you because you get free money to bet. It helps out William Hill. So win, win, win. Uh, hopefully more states coming soon, but that's rickrungood.com slash Will Hill. The thing that I saw on Will Hill, they have this bet now, which is the 2020, 2021 PGA Tour money list winner. So it was either... Last year or the year before, I saw this bet, and it was JT, and I mentioned it on, on video somewhere, uh, that JT was 11-1 to 1 to win the money title, and I was like, that's wrong. It's very wrong. Um, you know, he had won it, I think, the back-to-back -back years, and I think he would have won it again if he didn't hurt himself at Honda. That must have been two years ago, because then I think it was last year that I was that this bet was hanging around. The only issue with this bet is you've got to lock up your dollars for basically a full year, right? I mean, this isn't gonna this isn't gonna cash until what? The the tour championship at the end of next year, or maybe even I guess it would be BMW championship, because I don't think they count in the um everything is now a bonus at the tour championship. But like right now, John Rahm is 10 to 1. Uh, here is the actual money list right now. DJ is obviously in the lead. Bryson DeChambeau up there. Kokrak, Wolf, Cantlay, whatever, whatever, whatever. Uh, here's John Rahm, 1.3 million. So he's 1.8 million behind Dustin Johnson, but they've only played three and four events. You know what I mean? Like there's going to be so many more events here that these guys play. Rahm will pl probably play more if he sneaks out and wins a, a WGC event or a major championship. And then maybe he steals one at the team event again. If they, if we play Zurich, right? Like I feel like Rahm is, is not, you know, uh, or DJ is not like 10 times or three times as likely to win the, the money list as, as John Rahm is, even though Rahm is spotting him $1.8 million right now. So anyway, that's my tangent on, the PGA Tour stuff. Let's look at some of these. Let me see. Masters 2021. Uh, so DJ at William Hill has been enlisted as the favorite. Let me see if we can find some of these crazy numbers. Um, like, okay, so open. Ch so wait, what is this? Masters? Okay, so this is Masters. So like, I don't know what stands out to me. Uh, someone like, I mean, here's Answer. Answer just played well in November. You think April should be a better setup for him, 66 to 1. Co-crack 80, right? I mean, some of these numbers are definitely going to move throughout the throughout the year. So you want to kind of be grinding on these uh, as the year goes along. I'm trying to see if anything really stands out here. You know, Kisner at 125 is pretty interesting. Let's see if we can find a – Let's where's, where's the open? Here we go. Open championship. Xander 22. I don't know about that. I'm trying to see what else we have here. What was Tiger's number? 30? Yeah, that's too short. Lowry to go back-to-back, -back, doubtful. Here's Sungjae, 66. That's a pretty good number. Um, hold on, we're going to find one. I bet you there's going to be one down here. Cam Smith, 150. That's pretty good. Scotty, okay, Scotty Scheffler, uh, this, I would bet this number. Scotty Scheffler, 200. There is a pretty good chance that Scotty Scheffler is the best of that class, that Morikawa Hovland Wolf class. I, I think he might be the best one. Anyway, you're right. We should spend more time on futures and I'll try to do that uh, moving forward because it's an all around thing. Redman or McCarthy depends on what you're looking for. It depends on your type of lineup. I think objectively it's Doc Redman, but I do love the trajectory of both of them. Thoughts on Lee Westwood this week. Quietly played okay last week. Has been good on the European tour. Yeah, so uh, Lee Westwood has been like uh, outside of the miscut at I think Houston it was. He's been Top 30 all over the world, every European tour event for like 10 straight. Uh, played low-key well last week. I'm happy to go back to that. No no worries there. Zinzun Zhang is the question from Jay-Z. Look at this. Jay-Z is in the chat. Much appreciated. Uh, we were high on him as a high-risk, high-reward play in the past. Yeah, that's right. He's cheaper now. Let's look up the Strokes Gained database for Zhang. And I think I have him in here because I had to adjust his name. Okay, here we go. This should be good. 
All right. So here's the thing with Zhang. Uh, and he, it, it, it's very on brand. In his last 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So like in like 14 of his last 16 starts, he's either missed the cut or finished in the top 15. Uh, there is very little correlation and very little trends here for Zhang, right? He's he's going to be around a neutral off the tee player. He's going to have some weeks where he hits the ball well on approach really well. Sometimes he's going to finish bottom of the barrel. The putter is going to be hot. Like there's just, I guess my answer to this question, Jay-Z is sure. He has proven to us uh, a couple of times recently that he can pop off with no evidence that it's coming. But the problem is we have no idea when it's going to be. I think it is a pure dart throw. But if you were in the market for a dart throw, let's go. Let's do it. Uh, Jim. Her okay, so the next question from Tokyo Swan is about Jim Herman. Very similar case, right? I mean, we can pull up Herman, who, I mean, what did he do? He missed a million cuts in a row, and then he won, right? So here he is, PGA, you know, win he wins Wyndham. Uh, again, no evidence of this stuff coming. I, I think I would throw him in the same barrel as, as Zhang, which is he's going to pop. He's going to do it. I have no idea when it's coming, and there's there's no trends for it. But if you want a dart throw, it's good for you. Favorite GPP and cash play between 7,400 and 7,000? Um, I don't really play cash games, so I don't think you want that answer from me. 7,400 to 7,000, so that is this range on – oops, let's go to the cheat sheet here. This range on the cheat sheet, which I did also include the waves this week, so you can see – Seaside or Plantation course, where they're playing first. So if it says SSPL, that means they're going Seaside first, then Plantation. If it says PLSS, Plantation first, Seaside second. Um, so 7,000 to 74, best GPP plays. So uh, I actually think Varner probably checks in more than 15%, especially with Sam Burns now being out. I, I bet you Varner comes in at higher than this. I like him, but if you want to pivot, um, I'm okay with, with Joel Damon. At, at like two and a half percent. Um, I'm even okay going down to like Cam Davis at 7,200. Love the raw talent, right? Absolutely love the raw talent. Think he's in a pretty good spot. Norlander's now out. That's being reflected here in the cheat sheet as well. Um, so probably Varner, but if you want to pivot, maybe uh, Damon or Davis would be the ones that I would go to. Thoughts on Malnati. So I actually have uh, Malnati in some in some matchups this week uh, against like Patton Kazire, which I thought was kind of shockingly wrong here. Um, okay, so let's pull him up. And the rest of this question is, did I miss your fades video this week? So so no, there was no fades or sleeper video this week. Uh, I I took a slight break uh, after Masters week last week, so there was no fades or uh, sleepers video, but I mean, we've, we can kind of discuss those, those here. So here's Malnati. He missed the cut, uh, in his opening event this season at the Safeway, but since then he's been pretty good and he's doing it in a way that is at least encouraging, right? This is very much how, oh, who was this? Um, not Patrick Rogers. Oh my gosh. I'm blanking on this. I'm blanking on the guy that I'm thinking about. I, uh, I'll think of it, but here's what I like. Oh, it's Lonto. Lonto's, Lonto's like this. So he hits his, he's hitting his irons well, right? The two events that we have shot link data for, he gains four strokes on approach at Sanderson and five and a half at Shriners. That puts you in a very good floor situation. Uh, then he did bonkers, absolute bonkers with his, with his putter at Sanderson. And he was an uh, above average putter at Shriners. So I like guys that hit their irons well, and then have the chance of catching a hot putter, that is a very good combination for some of these guys that pop. So I do kind of like Malnati this week, and I got him in some matchups uh, earlier this week. Kucher or Damon? I think it's pretty clearly Damon at this point, right? Neither guy playing all that well. Kucher has completely fallen off a cliff. I'm not sure that one's all that close. Um Zach, I'm assuming this is Zach Johnson up there in the $8,000 range is a bit unusual for him. What do I think? We can look at Zach Johnson here on his strokes gain database. Um, he's kind of similar in that similar mold, right? Where most weeks he's going to hit his irons well and he can catch a hot putter. 
So I think it's fine. You know, we're seeing a top 10 at the U.S. Open, a top 20 at the Shriners. Um, a lot of good stuff from Tita Green, a lot of good stuff on ball striking. I'm okay with that. Yeah, it's probably more expensive than he's been in a while, uh, but it's a weaker field. Everybody's a bit more expensive. Is it less important this week to get six of six through? Last week, there were plenty of six of sixes, but now DK scoring should be higher. I'm not sure I'm following that one 100%. Uh, I would argue it's going to be more important to get six of six through this week, right? Because fewer are going to do it. Oh, maybe you're thinking about this the other way, like because so many people got through, it was more important to get six of six through. I guess I'm kind of coming at it from a different angle. I think there's going to be a lot less six of six lineups. Of course. Uh, I think it's going to be more important. Can you show the anti Bermuda specialist? Sure. So this is the course key stats page. This is, um, not only the regression model that I run, uh, for every course on the PGA tour. And again, remember this is on, I'm running the model on seaside, uh, this week because that's the only one with shot link data, but you can also see, uh, the grass specialist. So your anti-specialist, the guys that are worse on Bermuda than their actual normal strokes gain putting, uh, Doug Gim is number one. So he is a, a losing putter. Most weeks, he is a, a big loser on Bermuda, Tyler McCumber, Joseph Bramlett, Mav McNeely, Kevin Stadler. They are the anti-specialists. I'll leave this up here for a second so you can review it while I talk about the next question, which is what do I think about Jason Day? Man, uh, good question. So I, you know, the last couple of weeks I've been saying the box score has looked worse for Jason Day than it actually is like the results have looked worse because he had that top 10 at CJ cup where he withdrew on Sunday. Um, what I would want to do on Jason day. And this is the, the, the one week that you can go back and do this, Joey, go back to masters.com and like watch some of his shots. Go look at the holes he made bogey on. Was he missing putts? Was he spraying it off the tee? Rarely do we have the opportunity to watch every single shot that he has. I would, I would do it that way. If you're considering playing Jason day, I would go watch the film on him. Quite frankly, um, let's pause real quick. Couple of housekeeping items. Rickrungood.com slash Will Hill. If you have not gotten your free bet in New Jersey, Indiana, Illinois yet, I'll hopefully have more states available soon. Also, like the channel or like this video, excuse me, while you're here. That goes a long way. And I do want to take a, a, a minute to talk about uh, Jock Market, who they are now a partner. They now sponsor this show. I know you guys have been go playing like crazy on Jock Market. I have as well. Um, this is there, there's been a lot of questions in in my Slack channel about this. So if you're new to new to Jock Market, it is stock market DFS, uh, but you can get a cash market. So you can literally buy shares of golfers with real dollars and watch it go throughout the week. So I had, let me see what I had last week, sixteen shares I believe, sixteen shares of Cam Davis. I don't know if you can see this, sixteen shares of Cam Davis last week. That might be hard to see. Um, where I bought 16 shares at $4 and 16 cents and he finished at $18 per share. So that is a net $221 profit. I lost $33 on Morikawa. I lost $33 on Fitzpatrick and I lost 14 on, on Bubba Watson. I sold Rory McIlroy on Thursday, like a dummy and, uh, would have made a bunch of money on that as well, but I am square. So don't do what I do, but it's unbelievably fun. They're basically running it, this the way that they're running, you know, the quote unquote rake or uh, the way that this, the bidding is set up right now and the, the, the liquidity. It would be like if another DFS site dropped an extra 20 percent of, of money in the prize pool and didn't add any more entries into it. I mean, it's like free money at the moment. There's a ten dollar deposit bonus. If you deposit, use the code Rick 10, you get ten dollars in your account. Also. They're adding new things, right? That referral code wasn't didn't exist last year or last week. You had to uh, you had to send me a screenshot. So things are getting better for this week. Again, there is a free roll and there is a uh, cash market. So I'm looking at the cash market right now. Doc Redman is seven dollars and fifty cents. This IPO phase is going to end on uh, it's nine p.m. Eastern time. Doc Redman leads the way. He's most expensive share right now. Webb Simpson is six dollars. Um, I can already see a lot of value down towards the bottom. I know there's a lot of Austin Cook love this week. He's $2.50. Howard Varner is $2.55. Harris English. I don't know if you can see this. Hold on. 
Harris English, $2.60. I'm not sure if you can see that or not. Um, Justin Rose, Tommy Fleetwood, Louis Oosthuizen. There is a ton of value down here. Go and go in and bid it up. Also, remember, whatever your max bid is, um, like, so if, if someone's $2 right now and you bid 5 it's not going to automatically jump his price up to $5. It's going to put you one cent above. So you can put your max in, turn on your notifications for when you get outbid because it's going to be crazy during IPO. It's a lot of fun, and there are a lot of us making a ton of money on it. So, And I, and I like the innovation. The innovation is great. They do a great job. Rick10 is the promo code. Okay, um, let's go to ownership projections real quick. So uh, these ownership projections on rickrungood.com, they do, in fact, now reflect uh, Sam Burns being out, Henrik Norlander being out, and who was the other one this morning? Uh, Kramer Hickok is out. Bill Haas out as well. So I don't know if you're planning on playing any of those guys. The Sam Burns one was probably the big one. Um, so now I have Webb Simpson creeping all the way up to 33%. Uh, that is the highest owned golfer that I'm projecting. I also project uh, Henley, uh, Sebastian Munoz over 20%, Doc Redman at 23, Denny McCarthy at 24, uh, Varner down here in the $7,400 range at 15%. And I think those are the, the bigger names, uh, you know, over the 15 or, or 20% mark. So Keep that in mind. Again, I don't let one golfer's ownership dictate if, he, if I'm going to play him or not, right? If you want to play Webb Simpson, that's fine. He's deserving of the price. He's deserving of the ownership. Just find a way to differentiate yourself somewhere else. Uh, do I like Sebastian Munoz? Yes. I mean, we can we can look at, at, at Seb here. And um, this is, he's on a much better run than I think a lot of people want to give him give him credit for. So this goes back to the end of last season, right? I mean, you talk about the Northern trust top 20 there, eighth at the BMW eighth at the tour championship. And actually that eighth is with the starting strokes. He was actually better than that. I think he was seventh, um, without, uh, actually that might not be true. It might've been better than that. Then he goes, you know, top 25 at, at, at Sanderson farms, a 10th place and a 14th at Zozo and, and the CJ cup. I, he, he's definitely, pro, I don't think it's that hard to say he's in the best run of his career right now. So yes, I do like Sebastian Munoz. Um, what do I think the least popular lineup construction will be? That's a fun game to play. So <laughs> the absolute least, okay. So just kind of natural, natural landing points here would be Fleetwood would be your first man in. Your second man in would be like Poulter. Your third man in would be like Sepp Strocker, like Lee Westwood maybe. And then you'd have maybe someone down here in the bottom $7,000 range, like a Joel Damon. Like right there, you that's like, what, a combined ownership of like 20? Uh, that would certainly be the least popular lineup construction, I think, Jacob. Good question. Fun um Fun process. Uh, Tom Brady's butt chin. Welcome back, Tom Brady's butt chin. Thank you. Uh, will Webb or Henley be chalk? Yeah, both of them, right? So I have I have Webb being the highest owned golfer on the slate, uh, and I have Henley being the fourth highest owned golfer on the slate. So I believe they will both be chalk. Thoughts on a Coke Rock, Coke Rack bounce back? That's hard to say. Uh yeah, so it was, I mean, he was like three under through four at the Masters. Uh, I think his his second round was much worse than his first. I, I, I forgive these guys, right? You know, to, to miss a cut in a major championship, not all that big of a deal. To miss a cut in general, not all that big of a deal. He's been so good, um, you know, since the restart that if we liked him last week, which I did, there's no reason not to like him again this week. Haven't seen a top 10 fades or top five. Yeah. So no fades or sleepers this week. So here's what I, here's what it probably would have been. Right. So, so sleepers probably would have looked something like this. So usually I go down here. I probably would have mentioned something about, actually, I, I almost certainly would have mentioned Sam Burns. Who's, who's out at the moment. Uh, I would have mentioned someone like uh, Austin cook, who's 7,500, has some of the best uh, history around here. He's trending better recently. He certainly would have made that list. I think that Joel Damon probably would have made the list because he's checking in at 2.6%. We haven't seen him in a while. That tends to really skew 
people's perception, but the last time we saw him, he finished eighth. So I probably would have mentioned him. I probably would have mentioned Cam Davis in, in just the absolute raw talent. And I probably would have mentioned, um, I probably would have mentioned Harry Higgs, you know, 6,900. He's coming off a second place finish, uh, at the Safeway. So he's not coming off of it, but he had a second place finish at the Safeway. He tests positive. All of these things tend to, uh, keep people away from them, right? Like, oh, I haven't seen him in like three or four weeks. I forgot he existed. So that that probably would have been sleepers. And then David Hearn probably would have rounded out the sleepers because he's got the great course history. Fades probably would have looked like, uh, it probably would have looked like Sung Jay, which is unfortunate because I really like Sung Jay. The, the issue is he, the, the one thing he hasn't really shown in the restart is consistency. He hasn't backed up two good finishes in a row. So I, I, as much as I hate that, I, Sung Jay probably would have been a fade. Matthew Fitzpatrick, I probably would have argued that 2,800 or 28 to one, excuse me, is, is much too short for a guy who hasn't won in three years. Um, I probably would have faded Kevin Kisner, right? And that would have been a compliment to Kevin Kisner because um, the argument that I've been making this week is I like Kisner's game a lot. And I think he translates to a lot of shorter courses that require iron play. I don't think I need to be on him the the, the week that he's 20% owned when I can get him any other week or, or eight other times a year when he's 8% owned. So I probably would have argued that Kevin Kisner would have been a fade. Um, that, that's probably what it, what it looked like. Something like that. Good question. So I just did that in much shorter time. Um, Greg, thank you for joining. Much appreciated. Who are some of the worst Bermuda guys? Braden, I mentioned that. So uh, rewind. I won't cover it again so we can continue to go through these. Thoughts on Connors, Damon, Davis. That is um, – so I, I won't do full lineups. If you like that lineup, it works for me. Redmond will definitely be extremely owned, but at 8K, is it worth it? Um, so here's what I'll say about Doc. Um, I love Doc, right? I'm, I'm probably a little biased on Doc. I, I believe he is one of the better ball strikers in this field, and I don't have to believe that. If you go since the Tours restart, he's the fourth best in strokes gained approach in this field. I saw that when his number opened up at 70 to 1, I clicked it immediately. I, I think I tweet, I might have tweeted it or I put it in the Slack, and I was like, I'm on Doc at 70, like Monday morning. Um, he's so so then then usually the odds dictate the pricing. So if I thought the odds were wrong at 70, I probably think that his price is too low at 8000, right? I mean, what hasn't he shown? He's got three top 5 finishes in his last, I don't know, seven or eight starts. He has the game to tr like what hasn't Doc shown? That he's $8000 that he's with you know, I mean he's $100 more than CT Pan. Are you kidding me? I know Pan has the history here, but that's a joke. Connors or Coke Rack? Depends what you want. I'd probably buy back in on Coke Rack. I'm a sucker. Um, trying to figure out the 10K range. So, so yeah, I, I usually... So, here's the 10K range. I usually fade the... Ex, well, I don't always fade the expensive chalk, but um, I, I don't have a reason not to play Webb Simpson this week. Right. You know, 33% ownership. That's fine. If I was mass multi entering 150 lineups in something, maybe I'd have Webb at 15% and have half the field, half, half the field average on him. Um, but if I'm making one lineup, I'm okay with Webb and I'll just go, I'll go find other ways to differentiate. So I don't have any problem there. Sung Jay, I do have concerns about with the consistency Fleetwood. We haven't really seen it on the PGA tour. He hasn't been all that great. Any success that he's had, it's been on the Euro tour. I think he's trying to figure it out, but like if he's really at 6%, that's kind of interesting for a, for a, a GPP Henley, I think is, is right where he should be. It's well-deserved. The, the ownership is well-deserved. And then Terrell Hatton, um, probably another guy I'd go back and watch the film on in the same way. I watched Jason day. And I'd kind of let that, let that dictate. What ownership per percentages do we look at pivoting, pivoting to other options in each salary tier? Yeah, so this is always a, a fun exercise to do. So in terms of pivots, um, so if you were in the 10K range, uh, you know, the web pivot would be to, would be to Fleetwood. Uh, I mean, is, 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 is Webb Simpson five times as likely to, to win this golf tournament than, than Tommy Fleetwood is? No, the answer is he's not. Um, so that's an, that's an interesting pivot. Uh, even Terrell Hatton at 17%, which is, you know, basically a half of what Webb Simpson is projecting. That would be an interesting pivot. Munoz at 20. So in the low nine range, 
I mean, what about Joaquin Neiman? We've seen now, um, so he's been on, he was on a great run. 23rd at the U.S. Open, 13th at the Shriners, 6th at the CJ Cup, 17th at the Zozo. Test positive for COVID. We've seen different guys be different coming back from COVID, right? We've seen some guys be really rusty, like a Scotty Scheffler. We've seen some guys shake off the rust quickly, like DJ, and I don't want to compare Joaquin Neiman to DJ. We've seen some guys not miss a beat. Tony Finau, right? Finau came back and was like, oh, top 10, whatever. So if the only argument is he might be rusty, he might be, he also might not be, right? So that would be a pretty good pivot there. And then in the, uh, you know, the low, the low eights or the high sevens where you have Redmond, where you have Denny McCarthy. Um, I think your natural pivots there are probably like, I like uh, Brendan Todd's kind of interesting, right? These are, he's been bad, but he's coming all, he's got that broken toe, probably still working through that. Uh, finished fourth here last year. They're two of the shorter courses that we're going to get on the PGA tour. He can putt. Well, I, I would not mind Brendan Todd at 7,800. Good question. Hi, Rick. Just a quick question on ownership. Do DFS sites like DraftKings release info stats on who people are drafting? Um, no, they don't. Just curious as it seems the ownership, pro ownership projections are always pretty accurate. Yeah. So, I've actually really been really impressed with the industry about how good ownership projections have gotten over the course of the last, I don't know, couple of years. There's the, the I think what we figured out is, so no, DraftKings does not release any of this information or FanDuel or whatever. Um what I what I find interesting is there are natural places to build lineups, right? Like if you if you have web at 11,002, maybe the next natural spot is to go down to someone in the low 8,000s or something like that, right? There's kind of more natural builds that people make. So it, it, it really helps identify uh, where where people are going to land in their lineup. So no, it, it is, it, James, you're right. It's really good. Any interest on Gligic or Mark Anderson? Um, you know, Gligic is someone we were playing during like the Bermuda swing. Let's see how much they are. He's, they got to be sub 6K, right? Yeah, okay. So here's Gligic, 6,400. Yeah, I mean, I'd roll Gligic back out, right? 11th in Bermuda, 27th at Shriners, 37th at Sanderson. We liked him throughout that whole, you know, Bermuda swing type deal. 6,400, price hasn't moved. Yeah, running back out there. Mark Anderson, I don't remember getting much feels for Mark Anderson over the course of the last couple of weeks. Here he is, he's 6,100. The only thing I see here is a 26th at Bermuda. Um... I would much rather run out Gligic. Do you think ownership on Doc will be too high if you play him? So uh, we did pivots. I won't rehash that. Thoughts on Doug Gim? Yeah, Doug Gim, outside of the fact that it's Bermuda, uh, all signs point to Gim, right? He's one of the worst guys on... He's, he's an anti-Bermuda specialist, but if we go to... So here he is. So this is since the restart. He's gaining basically a stroke per round. Let me do this here. So if we sort this by strokes gain total, uh, Gim is a small sample size guy, but gaining nearly a stroke per round. He's like 12th in this field. So that's since the restart. Uh, I'm concerned about the Bermuda, but he's playing well. I'm, I'm okay with it. Love the show. Thank you, James. Much appreciated. Thoughts on David Hearn? Yeah, I've talked about David Hearn a lot this week. He has uh, some of the best some of the best course history. He has, um, he's, he's flashed a bit here recently. If you just gave me his average finish uh, at this event over the last four starts, like 22nd or something like that, I would take it and run right now. The 9, take, nine to 10K range is going to be a goalie of ownership after Henley. Who do you like the most? Um, let's see. So let's open this up to nine, 9 to 10K range. <clears throat> I really am starting to convince myself. So there's, so there's usually somebody who pops into the, uh, who pops into the chat. Who's like, who do you like? Who did you like on Monday that you don't like now? Or who didn't you like on Monday that you like now? That question, like Joaquin Neiman's growing on me a lot, right? I mean, he is someone who has won on the PGA tour. He's shown us the upside. He's someone that was playing well. The only reason not to like him is because he tested positive for COVID, which we've seen guys be very different in terms of when they come out. Um, he's the guy who's probably growing on me the most. Um, man, so 
Solomon says, Mayo seems to put a lot of stock in golfers disappointing who were in the pressure cooker of the Masters last week, a.k.a. Sung J.M. Are there any examples of stats that show this? So a major hangover. Um, I don't have it handy. I think I did this at one point where I went back and looked at like how they play the week after a major championship. The problem with that is it's a bit arbitrary, right? It, it would be like saying how they play the week after the RBC Heritage. You're just looking at like one tournament and every guy is going to be different. So I, I understand it. You know, we've interviewed players that uh, tell you there's a bit of a hangover or they spend a lot of energy or uh, a close call. Uh, some guys, a close call, they're disappointed. Some guys, they get a close call, like Peter Malnati a couple weeks ago, and now he's like, now he's jazzed up. Now he's juiced up. Now he's full of confidence. So unfortunately, there's probably no data that's going to accurately be able to show us that. Um, so, so unfortunately, that's going to be tough to quantify. Um, I lost my spot. Hold on. Let me find my spot again here. Okay. Henley is 125 to one on DK. I would be very surprised at that. I, I mean, no, he's not right. He's like 20 to one, 25 to one. So if you, if you somehow got Henley at 125, that would be very good. Um, who is a better golf gambler, Mayo, Raza, or Feinberg? Um, I mean, Ben is very clearly the best DFS player. Uh, I don't think Jeff plays DFS all that much. Much Pat, uh, I mean, very much will tell you he's he's not good at this stuff, right? That's the whole point. So I, I don't know what their records are. I mean, Ben's, I'm sure I'm certain the best DFS mind. Um, I don't know. Good question though. What do I think about buy low guys on Kucher or Todd on Jock Market? Yeah, so. Jock market's obviously a bit different because their price is going to be changing over the course of the next couple of hours, Brian. Um, I do kind of like Todd this week. I, I know it's been bad, but again, broken toe. This should be a place that fits him. Kucher's just a different player. He's not, he's not nearly as good anymore. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Four thoughts on... Okay, I talked about those guys, so I'm going to skip it. No, vi no fades or sleepers video this week. Correct, Ralph. I did it earlier. So um, you mu I might have already done it by the time you asked this. I'm probably pretty far behind on questions. Any head-to-heads I like. Henley over Fitzpatrick sticks out to me. Let's look it up. Let's throw it in the matchup tool. So again, rickrunagood.com. While I'm loading this up, hit the like button for me. It's much appreciated. goes a long way. Here's the head-to-head -head matchup. You can throw this. Uh, you can throw any two golfers into this for whatever time frame that you want. So what are we looking at? Henley and Fitz. So let's do let's do from the start of 2020. Is that fair? That's that's kind of my default I like to go to. Henley, I bet, is gonna run away with this. And I don't know what the odds are on this exact matchup. So you'll someone will have to let me know. Henley versus Fitz. Oh, it's actually a lot it's actually closer than I thought. So I have Fitz winning this, or I'm sorry, scratch that. I have Henley winning this 55% of the time. So his true money line. Should be about minus 122. Um, that was one. Uh, I, I did this on the betting preview. Malnati over Kazire I got. And there was another one on the on the betting and one and done preview. I would refer you to that. Uh, about halfway through the show, I go through three matchups. I think the third one was a good one, but I can't remember what the exact matchup was. Uh, but I have Henley beating Fitzpatrick about 55% of the time here. Is it just me? Or is betting without, I don't understand this question. So it says, without top six players for outrights, the best way to bet outrights in most cases. Oh, wait, without in each way? I'm not sure. I don't know what that question is. I'm not sure I understand it. If if you can clarify, I'm, I'm happy to, to, to answer it. Thoughts on v Vijay as being <laughs> the worst putter in the world? <laughs> Uh, yeah, he might be. Let's do this. Let's do, let's do worst putters in this field. So this is going to be since the restart. This will be fun. Since the restart, and give me a second, this might take a minute to load. There's a lot of data in here. Since the restart, Vijegas is a minus 1.8 uh, per round. Now that's only 10 rounds. So if we open up, open this up a little bit, he might get better. Let's see. If I open this up to, I just threw it back like a year. Well, that's only four more measured rounds. I mean, how much do I even have on this guy in general? 
I might not have that many measured rounds on him, but he has been very bad putting. Like, ho- like yes, very much worse putter in this field. At least since the restart, it's not a lot of rounds, but it's been very bad. Uh, that gave me a good a good laugh. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thoughts on top ranked amateur Davis Thompson? Yeah, so Davis Thompson's the kid from Georgia. Number one ranked am at the moment. Um, I, I, Kevin, I find these guys very difficult to, to figure out um, because you kind of never know what you're going to get from him. He's very good. He's got a lot of college uh, acumen. I, I'm a firm believer that, you know, the line, uh, the, the line is so blurred between the corn fairy guys and the PGA tour guys. I think it is also getting even more blurred between the amateurs and some of the guys on the PGA tour. I mean, you saw what Andy Ogletree did last week at the masters. Like these guys are very, very good. I, I don't, I don't have a ton of information on Davis Thompson, but I would keep my eye on him for a while. Matthew Moore. I made a stream while being in Europe. Thank you for joining. Is there a less popular golfer than Webb that you like? Oh, that'll be good for one and done. Ooh, one and done. Harris English. Um, you know, people might stay away from him because of the poor history, but I made the argument earlier that um, this is the best he's probably ever been in his career. So maybe we forgive him for a lot of those miscuts. That might be interesting. Or, I mean, I I, I do... Like I, 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 as every time I scroll over Joaquin Neiman's name, I get more interested in it. And I'm sitting here looking at it like ninety one hundred dollars. Holy crap! Am I gonna miss out on this win? I'm gonna have to go bet this now. Like I just every time I look at that name, it, it gets me every time. Course history seems like it's being factored in more this week. Um, is it though? I mean, it shouldn't be, right? I mean, there's two courses and we only have data on one. I would not. So, so course history, I guess, I guess if you're trying to say guys that can fit these courses because they're shorter courses and guys that can deal with kind of the mental of playing two courses in a week, but I don't know if course history should really be factored in more than any other week. Also, I think course rotation should be. So if you're, if you've just joined, uh, remember two courses in action for the first couple of days, seaside and plantation plantation plays historically about a half a shot easier. That's a pretty big deal. Um, you know, on average. So I, I don't know if course history, course rotation should definitely be on your radar in terms of first round leaders, um, uh, showdown slates, things like that. And don't freak out. Do not freak out when your guy is like three under at the seaside course and in a tie for 41st after round one, like let it breathe. Let him go play the plantation course and see what score it is. If your guy's like one under on the plantation course on Thursday, deuces he's he's done toes up um all right what else we got i prefer guys like redmond and varner uh but is it better to have team no putt and uh well so here's here's what's interesting right i'm always a fan of team team no putt i'm always a fan of guys being able to snap off and find a good putting week uh however and i i wish i had the numbers handy for this in the off season in a couple weeks i'm gonna try to release a lot of this data that like questions like this the winning score historically has been close to, if not deeper than 20 under. And a lot of times they're putters, man. You got to be able to putt. You got to be able to get hot. So maybe you're not a good putter but or or a, a great putter every week, but some guys can pop, right? That's like the um, Peter Malnati uh, story, like the Lonto Griffin. I know Lonto's not in this field, but like guys like that who have the opportunity to pop. Uh, Ian Poulter, the more I look at Ian Poulter's name, the more I think he's interesting. Favorite fades. Um, I I might be way behind this question. I've already done that. Um, any concern about Neiman covered that? Uh, yeah, Malnati over Kazire. Why did I like that head to head? Malnati's popped and has the the approach and the putting that I like, and Kazire just hasn't been all that good. <clears throat> Can I make a case that Munoz should be 10K? No. So probably not 10K. I, I can make the case he should be 9,500. He's 9,000. I don't think I can make a case that he should be 10K. I think the 10K with Henley, Hatton, Fleetwood, M, Simpson is very fair. I could make the case that Sebastian Munoz could be a couple hundred dollars more, but not, not, um, not, not 10,000. 
Um, first time on your channel. Welcome. Thank you, Charles. Uh, wondering your thoughts on my each way picks for this week. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't like to get into all that stuff. If it works for you, it works for me. These are all guys that I like. All good. Yeah, no worries. If it were, if it's, if you like it, that's what matters, right? I don't want to spend your money. You shouldn't want me spending your money. My goal is to give you the data, my thoughts. You take all of that and you decide what works best for you, right? I don't know your risk tolerance. I don't know, uh, what kind of lineups you're trying to build. I don't know what your goals are. So I, I try to avoid like the lineup and like, Hey, should I bet this or not? Like if it works for you, it works, it works for me. It's all good. Oh boy. I've, 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 an, I've answered a lot of these. I'm probably way behind on the questions. Um, what is the type of golfer that does well at RSM? So historically, so we can, I can show you the course key stats, which you should keep in mind a couple of things. This is only on the seaside course. So driving accuracy and driving distance were the two most important stats. They rarely do they, uh, come together. Right. Uh, but they do this week. Also, uh, knowing that both these courses are about 77,000 yards, shorter hitters are okay here, right? They are okay. You got to be able to hit your irons and you got to be able to get hot with a putter is normally what is, um, what is lining up for success. Probably I read these answered that. Is there any other strategy or is golf so variant about ownership? Uh, as far as lineup building. Okay. So this is the one issue with like, okay. In other sports, you can build correlated lineups, right? So in baseball, how do they score? Uh, one guy gets a hit. Next guy gets a double. Next guy walks. Next guy hits a home run. They all score points because of that. Right. How do they score in football? Um, you know, a quarterback throws it to a wide receiver. They both earn points for that. Those two things are correlated. Um, th th there are not easy ways to correlate uh, in terms of golf, right? I mean, you can't say if one guy does well, this guy's going to do well. Uh, it, it might be the case that they happen to play well at the same courses, but it's not a guarantee like you have a quarterback and a, and a wide receiver. Um, so what you'll see is co the correlations you'll see are skill sets, right? So this week, if we're talking about driving accuracy, driving distance, we're talking about ball strikers, you might correlate strokes gain ball striking, right? Like I could run some lineups that are, Give me the six golfers under 50,000 that are the best in strokes gained ball striking. That might be a really good way to do it this week. I love using lineup optimizer for something like that. Um, or you could correlate courses. So what could happen is, and, and I don't, I didn't see this in the forecast last time I checked, but like, especially at events that have two courses, one day at a different course might be completely different than another. So you might get guys on a correct or a wrong side of a draw. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of other great ways to correlate outside of that, but it's a really good question, Jim. Long shot first round leader. Okay. So if I'm looking for a long shot first round leader, I'm going to look for someone who's playing on the plantation course. So I'm going to, I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to look for guys who are playing the plantation course who I think can get hot at times. Right. So guys that would fit that Adam Hadwin, right? Adam Hadwin is, I don't know what his first round leader number is. I don't have it up, but, um, he's a shorter hitter, which should be fine. He's good with his irons, right? So historically he hasn't played well recently with his irons, but he should be. And we know we can get a hot putter, right? We've seen that. That would be like a pretty good option. Um, some of these guys with really raw skills, like a Cam, uh, oh sorry, I was gonna say Cam Davis, but he's playing the seaside course, so I wouldn't go there. Uh, if you want the king of first round leaders, Keegan Bradley's playing the plantation course. Even someone like a Harry Higgs, right? I mean, uh, he's sixty nine hundred. I don't know what his first round number is. We've seen him get hot at times. I think he's been forgotten a bit this week playing on on the plantation course first. That's that's the way I would go. What games do I play on DK? Rick Run Good. Are you gonna send me? And what's your name? Are you going to send me invites? I get so many invites. I usually ignore them all. Um, I like to play anything. The GPPs that I can max enter. It ends up being a lot of single entry stuff. So like the $200 single entry, I think it's called the driver or the long drive. Maybe that's the $100 one. Um, because it has the lowest rake and it has the, the, the two times min cash, which I like. Oh, I just lost my spot. Hold on. I'm going to try to go back up. Uh, here we go. So most important skill for this weekend. Yeah. I've kind of covered that stroke chain off the tee. You could put that together. 
Uh, is the $10 code for jock market only first time depositors? Good question. I would say probably, but if you can try it again, if you can deposit and try it again, I don't know, try it. They, they might drop it in there. Uh, again, $10 free on jock market. Rick 10 is the promo code. I don't know. I don't know the answer for that, Jay, but you can try it. I don't know. We'll see. Any cheap guys that you're willing to take a, take a chance on? Um, David Hearn's the first one that pops to mind to me. $6,600. He's uh, shown us a bit recently, and he has good course history around here. That's probably the first place that I would go. Uh, Gligic, someone pointed out earlier. I thought that was fair. We've been playing Gligic a lot the last couple of, of starts that he's had. He's 64. I thought that was fair as well. Oh, 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 Jeremy comes in and, okay, completely on board with what you're talking about now. So, FanDuel has betting without the top six players in the field. Got it. That makes a lot of sense. So, this was also something you could get on William Hill and other places when DJ was running away with the Masters, like, winner except for Dustin Johnson, right? So, it's pretty cool. These are pretty cool bets. Um, so, they give odds for who finishes highest without the top six involved. Okay, so I assume the top six is probably... I mean, I don't have the odds in front of me, but I assume it's Webb, Sungjae, Fleetwood, Hatton, Henley, Fitzpatrick. That's probably it. I would have to see the odds on these guys, but I mean, Mac Hughes could be interesting if he's longer. That's a pretty cool way to do it. I, I, I wish I had the odds in front of me. We could dedicate more time to it, but thank you for clearing that up because I had no idea what you were talking about before. Um... We've covered a lot of this stuff. Um, best play on the slate. Wow. So do I get to take everything into account? Like in a, okay. So like in a vacuum, obviously it's Webb Simpson, but that's too easy. So let's take into account value. Let's take into account ownership. Best play. Oh God. I'm going to say it. It's Neiman. It's Joaquin Neiman. He's 9,100. He's not going to break the bank. He, he's been playing great. We can't penalize him for maybe being rusty for COVID because others haven't really shown the rust. He's won before. He has plenty of upside. You made me do it. Who asked that question? Tin Tin Poker. You made me do it. Thanks. It's Neiman. Kucher, yeah, Kucher stats are terrible, but get better and better the further back you go in time. Yeah, that's the, that's the problem, unfortunately. The further back you go, the better he is. The, the closer you are to now, the worse he is. I think, so this is a really good conversation. This came up on um, the First Cut podcast, CBS Sports podcast that I host. Um, Greg Ducharme brought this up, and he was like, the things that Kucher was doing, being able to hit it, like as short as he was a couple of years ago, and still getting the results that he was getting, right? Winning Mayakoba. I think he won the Sony a couple of years ago. Like, that was incredible stuff. His pathway to victory was so small. He had to be so perfect, and he was. And now we're not seeing that anymore. Yeah, Norlander's out. Correct. Norlander is out. Um, Hickok is out. Correct. What do I think of Webb? I think he's the best player in the field. Uh, thank you. Thank you for the nice note. Thank you. Thank you. First round bets on sports books separate. Yeah. So uh, Rick, Rick mentions this Rick Brown brings this up. Some books are separating out first round leader per course. There are other books that are not. So the, the books that you, that are not uh, separating this out, you certainly want to look at the plantation course. Let me see. If I can find one, oh, I just lost it. First round leader. When I looked earlier, I'll have to double check this. William Hill was not separating these them out. Let me see. They have the as much as I love the options that they have. They're putting more options out. It's the, the user interface on this site has got to get better. Um, I think I'm at the end of the question, so you can get your quick questions in right now. So I'll, I've got six more minutes or so, or we can end it, or I can just talk about like the masters or whatever, whatever you want to talk about, anything you want in the chat right now, masters, uh, life, whatever you want. I'm at the, I'm at the end. 
So no one likes Malnati. That's not true. I like Malnati. Also, while you're here, hit the like button. Five minutes to go. Five minutes to go. Let me see what's on William Hill right now. William Hill, I've been impressed with. They not only have matchups, they have um, they have uh, groups. They have uh, a lot of like like I'm I'm very excited with the offerings that they're that they're rolling out this week. If you had five dollars to bet this week, who would you bet any market? Well, five dollars, I probably want something sizable to return. So let's say, um, let's say something over 50. Let's say doc. I put 50, I put $5 on doc Redmond. Uh, Danny McCarthy is 65 to one this week without betting top six. So what would be really interesting, Jeremy is to, um, run the numbers against one another, right? What their odds are. And then what their odds are without the top six, then remove the equity the win equity of the top six golfers and try to redistribute that. I would really need to deep dive into that. I really like the concept. What does my betting slip look like this week? Uh, Web, and then I drop down to. So I'm gonna have to go add Neiman. I, that was not my plan until like an hour ago. So it'll probably be Web, so Web's in. Uh, I'll add Neiman. Then I'll go. I already got. Uh, I got Doc at seventy to one on Monday. That's at like fifty to one some places now. That's in there. I have uh, Denny at, I think I got him at 80 and I got uh, Cam Davis at 125 to one. That's my slip for the week. Um, there's the weekly Mav McNeely question. He's the most asked about golfer on the slate. It's unbelievable. <laughs> is, is this historically a course where the optimal DraftKings lineup comes significantly under the salary cap? I don't have the optimal handy. I'd have to go back and... Uh, I'd have to go back and run it. I don't have the optimal stuff handy. I might have tweeted it out a year ago, so I might have to go back and look. Is the Run Good Tour going to make a comeback? The Run Good Tour is a uh, video game uh, tour that I was running uh, during during the shutdown, during quarantine. Probably not. You know, the new game, I, I wish I had more time to dedicate to it. I, I don't play as much anymore. Uh, it's so it's so hard to, to, to kind of manage that league as, as much as I wish I could, Kevin. Probably not. <laughs> Tom brings up the Bryson possibly missing the cut last week. Yeah, I mean, I got flamed for that take a lot. Uh, that that I thought Bryson, my, my point was Bryson had the biggest pathway of all the top players to miss the cut, uh, which ended up being true, and he damn near did miss the cut. He he, he bogeyed like 17 and 18 on, on round two. And brought the cut line down with him. Probably could have very easily missed the cut. So appreciate it, Tom. That's pretty funny. Uh, it's my it's it, dude. Mav McNeely might have a burner account who comes on here and asks questions about Mav McNeely all the time. That's funny. Yeah, HV three is great. I think he's gonna be one of the highest owned in the, in that in that tier. Always like a Mac Hughes top 10. Yeah, that's cool. I actually, or top 20. I actually, I, I, I mentioned him top, top 10 earlier in the week because eight of his last 16 starts have been top 15s. Um, will the Rick run good best ball league come back? Good question. Um, I don't know. The fan tracks was a disaster trying to draft that last year. Now they fixed it in the middle of the draft, which I much appreciated and they were easy to work with. And I've been trying to get, get like, I've been trying to work with them and they, they don't seem to be all that responsive. I wanted to, it could only hold 200 people last year. I, I, we, we got way more people who wanted to play. So I don't know. Like, it's just what I'm trying to do at scale, like a really good product doesn't exist for it. Um, it's tough. It's tough. Um, so I don't know if best ball will be back. I will definitely play. I'll try to manage and, and commission some some season long fantasy leagues. No problem. We'll see if best ball comes out. Uh, update on the Vegas move. Uh, yeah, soon. Probably mid December is probably when we'll move to Vegas. We've gone back and forth a couple times. Things are in the works. Knock on wood. Nothing. Nothing's closed yet, but we are in the process. Um, Jay says the optimal lineup for DraftKings last year used 48,600. There you go. 
I have no way to fact check that, but I trust Jay. He says it was 735 points scored. And it was Duncan, Todd, Harmon, Munoz, Simpson, KH Lee. That sounds about right. Favorite stack at the top. Ooh. Can you get Webb and Henley in a lineup? What would you have to do to get Webb and Henley in a lineup? That would be pretty good. Thoughts on, thoughts on Scott Harrington. Tommy, since you've asked five or six times, you must really want this. Let's go see. Last thing. We'll get out of here. Scott Harrington. I don't have many thoughts on him. Let's look him up. Let's look him up together. Uh, absolutely brutal ball striking at the Vivint at the Houston Open. Missed his three cuts before that. Um, doesn't have a top 10 since Houston last year. So I'm not sure what there is to love about Scott Harrington. I like his story. I think he was great on the Corn Ferry, right? But um, I'm, I'm not sure if there's much excitement here, at least for me. But if you like him, go for it. You should do it. All right. That'll do it. RSM Classic live chat. Um, housekeeping items. Hit the like button. Do it right now. It takes you five seconds. Much, much, much appreciated. Helps me. Helps everybody. Jock Market. Download it. Play on it. It is literally free money. I, the messages that I get about people winning and the names that I see on the leaderboard, go after it. Use the code RICK10 to, down, to, to download it to get a $10 bonus. If you want to send me a screenshot too, it's not necessary anymore, but I'll retweet it. I'm cool with that. Um, if you have not signed up for William Hill yet, rickrungood.com slash Hill for your best offers. Best of luck this week. Later. I'm off to the driving range. I haven't, I haven't swung a golf club in so long. I'm in big trouble. Later.